Geeky Show. I'm your host for the evening, Eugene Stevens. Uh, that is uh, that's a tribute to our friend Cyrus, who couldn't make it tonight. We were hoping he was going to be on. So uh, he's going to Cyrus. Yeah, Cy. Uh, hopefully, who knows? Maybe he'll still join us. We 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 called. I should have recorded it in the pre-show. We called. We were trying to get him on. We're trying to get Elaine on, Laney on as well. But uh, it's 2020. What do you expect? You know, nothing nothing's going to go the way you want it to go this year. So, which is which is our topic for tonight. I'm sure if you've seen the title of the episode, um, I am your host Eugene Stevens. Uh, we've got a full cast tonight, and uh, let's go ahead and get into it. We're going to start off with our opening question. Uh, we're going to start off, I was, we're going to do this, if you've ever heard the term compliment sandwich, where you start off saying something nice, and then you say what it is you really need to say, and then you end with something nice as well. And we're going to kind of do that with this year, because, yeah. Uh, so we're going to start off with, uh, what is one of your favorite Christmas memories? Would anyone like to go first? All right, I'll go. Okay. Um... Let's see. One of my favorite Christmas memories. Uh, honestly, like my grandparents, we lived uh, in a cul-de-sac, and they lived kind of in the back part of the cul-de-sac, and we always had Christmas over at my grandfather's house, and um, he just he always went all out for Christmas. So I mean, there were just tons of toys and everything else, and just like to the point that I we my wife and I had a real uh, come to Jesus meeting. Like when we had kids, because my grandfather, like if it was up to my grandfather, we would have opened presents uh, the day that we got out for a Christmas break from school because he was like, well, what's the point? They they go halfway through and they don't they can't play with their new toys. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only reason they roped him back into that was they're like, if you do that, every kid in the neighborhood is going to be asking their parents, why did the Stevens boy, why did Santa Claus come visit the Stevens first? Yeah. <laughs> so, I like it. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't want to have to deal with the neighbors. That was the only reason. Uh, so anyway, it was, um, yeah, there's a lot of, of fun memories with that. But yeah, just going over to my grandfather's house and just seeing this massive amount of toys. And we we did always open presents on Christmas Eve. So that still was, that was like the bargain. That was the bargain. It was, okay, fine. It's not a week early, but we at least one night early. So anyway. Um, Ray. <laughs> Uh, so I have tons of good memories of Christmas. My parents have always been, um, Your mom. my mom for sure yeah. has always thought that and dad too, like they both made sure Christmas is uh, memorable. Um, that being said, uh, I, I was going to pick the 4 30 AM wake up call from my mom one year. That was fun. Cause we had to get down to Toronto afterwards, but I think my favorite me- uh, Christmas memory so far was Chris waking up to my parents trying to wake us up for Christmas. Was that at your sister's house? <laughs> I can't remember. I think it was Saul, but uh, all I remember is uh, Chris did not wake up nice. <laughs> <laughs> what time was it? It was 6.30 in the morning, <laughs> and we made her wait, and she comes busting through. I think we were sitting Merry in Christmas. Evan's room. Merry Christmas takes a picture and then leaves. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> she just comes blazing, Merry Christmas, click, and then leaves. Oh, hell no. <laughs> she's giggling as she's running away because we strictly told her, like, look. Eight. Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. And she's like, she totally agreed knowing she wasn't going to stick to it. So that was my first Christmas morning. With, with family. my family, and yeah. yeah, that was that's probably one of my favorite. Memories. <laughs> oh, other than God. other than obviously the kids, like we, uh, yeah, the kids' faces every time. Yeah, you know, that's pretty yeah. fun too. That's pretty so. fun too. That's yeah. fantastic. <laughs> what, what about you, Chris? <laughs> so, not that one. This, this morning, there's uh, she wakes up and this flash happens. And it, <laughs> <laughs> so, I grew up. Uh, in a very interesting household. So my mom and her best friend at the time on Christmas Eve used to get <laughs> shit black out drunk. So we had a rule that we couldn't wake my mom up before 930 because she was really hella hungover. <laughs> so, and then we come bring our stockings up onto her bed because she was really hungover. Very so different, di- very different very shows. Different households. <laughs> um, so that was a rule. So I was like, yeah, okay, you don't have to wake up at the ass crack of dawn because you know mom would kill us because she's probably still drunk um but um where's the eggnog yeah holy shit 
Um, but I remember I didn't spend very many. I think I've spent one Christmas with my dad growing up. So that one was at my Nana, my granddad's house. And they lived in Toronto for my whole life. Um, and they had this really kick-ass loft apartment in downtown Toronto. They didn't live there for very long, but it was so cool because I had a spiral staircase and a loft and it was awesome. And I got um, a bunch of toys because my Nana loved to spoil us. But I remember waking up on Christmas morning in that loft apartment thinking it was pretty cool. And then every Christmas since the kids were born yeah. after that has been pretty awesome. Yeah. Especially because you get this sweet age with like between three and like seven yeah, where they're, they're really, really hardcore into it. into it. So they totally buy it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that's really fun to see their eyes yep. in the morning thinking the whole thing is, is real. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yep. Uh, Joseph, what's so, a favorite Christmas? Movie? I actually had a hard time with this only because there's, um, a few and my birthday is two days after Christmas so for me usually Christmas was either like it was like an extended thing or I got like part of whatever I was going to get for Christmas and the other part for my my birthday uh one of the stories that I did want to tell maybe I'll tell this later is how that Christmas memory turned into the best ghost story that I have personally uh but the one I am going to say is so for those of you that know me fairly well I enjoy um, what did we determine I was last weekend? A chaotic evil, depending on what I'm doing. Ooh. Or, 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 I chaotic don't neutral. Remember. I don't remember. But I do enjoy. Did you guys uh, play D &D? No, I, but I do enjoy sowing seeds of chaos and trolling when I can. Mm -hmm. And I learned that from my father. And growing up, I was a huge, huge, huge uh, fan of the X Files. And when the series finally finished, right here. Um, I had told my parents that for Christmas, I wanted the the whole thing, the entire library, the, all nine seasons, that box set, the movie, everything, right? And if you also know a little bit about me, I'm a little bit of OCD. I like to put, things need to be in order. DVDs are in alphabetical order, you know? It's just, that's just the way I am, right? Right. So I wake up Christmas morning, he hands me a big box. It's heavy. I'm thinking, yes, this is what they got me. He gave me season six for <laughs> the Xbox. Not even season one. And the box was heavy to make it feel like I had gotten them all. Uh, so I was very grateful, obviously. But in my mind, I was like, you could I mean, season one, man. Like, come on. Uh, but uh, so I started, you know, searching for stuff and blah, blah, blah. And uh, I was I had a part-time job uh, at the time. Cause I'm, and now I'm forgetting when it went off the air the first time. But anyway... Come to my birthday, I wake up and he hands me a shoebox, unwrapped shoebox, just like it's like a Nike shoebox with the rest of the seasons in there. Uh, that's so. I would have really yeah. trolled my kids and taken out each disc and put it in the wrong oh, yeah. <laughs> shoe on top of all of that. Oh, Logan's horrified. That might happen, honey. Yeah. <laughs> oh, not now. It's going to happen. <laughs> But we don't do CDs anymore. No, right? we don't. <laughs> no, that's true. It's something else. Um, I, I guess you could, like, the equivalent would be, like, giving someone a bunch of gift cards that aren't active or are empty. They've only got, like, a few cents or whatever, and then giving them one, like, big one that actually works. So <laughs> I like Jen's that. face at that was just like, oh, my God, why would you do that? gift cards. <laughs> That'd be awesome. I like it. <laughs> Jen, not so much. <laughs> No, so my, Jen, what, I'm freezing up. What's a what's a? Uh, I was gonna say she she's not listening to us right now. Yeah. <laughs> what's a what's a holiday memory you you? One of your favorite holiday memories. Um. So honestly, I don't really have anything different. Like my my Christmas is pretty much the same every year. I go to my parents, stay the night, the night before, wake up, and there's a shit ton of presents because there's five kids. So it's it's been pretty much the same my whole adult life. Um, I guess the one year that was different is when I went to visit my grandparents, my grandma and my great grandma when she was still alive. And that was nice because, you know, I wanted to spend Christmas with them because my great grandma was getting up there and sick and stuff. So that was probably um, one of my more notable. But I, I don't have any exciting Christmas stories there. It's pretty much the same for me every year. <laughs> She's like, uh, just repeat. Yeah, same thing. basically. What about you, Sean? Well, yeah, obviously the disclaimer, like all the Christmases since my kids were born. Yeah. That's yeah, a different yeah, experience. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, I, I love Christmas. I always have. It's been my favorite holiday. Um, as a kid, so my grandparents uh, ran a dairy farm. And uh, so when you do that, you can't go typically to anyone else's house or anything like that because you still have to feed them and milk them twice a day. So a lot of our Christmases were spent on this farmhouse. Um, so Dutch family, old Redbrook uh, farmhouse, big farm. And so I'm the oldest in my generation. My mom was the oldest in hers. So for the longest time, it was just my sister and I that would go to the my grandparents' farmhouse with my parents. Mm -hmm. And I had a whole whack of aunts and uncles with no kids. So it was just us. So we would always get spoiled. Um, but I have such vivid memories of the old farmhouse and I had the wood stove in the back and like a thousand people piling into this house with one bathroom. And Jeez. Christmas Eve, all the men would go out, milk the cows and all that and take the kids with. And my sister and I could swear we could hear Santa and the reindeer up on the barn. Mm -hmm. And when we got back, Santa had been there because Christmas awesome. Eve is when you would open up the gifts. Mm -hmm. And like just even walking back from the barn to the farmhouse, like it was dark, usually clear sky. And you could hear that crisp snow under mm -hmm. your rubber boots. Yeah. Which yep. Your feet would be freezing because they weren't <laughs> insulated. Yeah. But uh, and yeah, just chatting with all my uncles and my dad and my grandfather and stuff like that. And then, yeah, walking in, the house is all perfectly warm and all these presents. And there was a shit ton of presents because <laughs> there were so many of us. And the There would be so much food and stuff like that. So we spent a lot of Christmases doing that just because my grandparents couldn't go anywhere. So sometimes my uncles would like, tell my grandfather to stay inside or whatever. We'll, we'll take care of the cows and stuff like that. But, uh, like I've had a lot of, I have a lot of great memories. It was hard to pick, but we did that one so often that I can still smell everything. Like the, like I hate to say it, the smell of the barn and the cows, seeing yeah. the cow's breath because it was pretty cold and yep. fresh milk and stuff like that. It's just, it's very vivid. And, uh, I wish Someone in my family still had the farm. Yeah. So I could have my kids. I was supposed to take it over, but if I was about five or six years too young. Um, so my grandparents couldn't hold on to it that long. But that was my dream was to take over that farm. But yeah. just a little too young to do it. So, yeah, that's my big one. Like I got, I got tons of other ones. But, uh, yeah, when I was really young and, yeah, we swear we could hear... Santa and the reindeer up on the roof for the barn and stuff like that. So. That's nice. I would have pegged you for your favorite holiday being April Fool's Day, but no. <laughs> <laughs> so a quick note, uh, talking about the hearing Santa on the roof. Uh, the other day I was looking for something to watch and um, on Disney Plus they have the America's Funniest Home Videos mm -hmm. and they had a holiday one. And the very first one was like this home video of, you know, the dad and there's this kids and he's like, you can hear Santa on the roof, and like you can hear footsteps on the roof. And they're like, Santa tried, decided to do something besides the chimney, and you see a rope come down <laughs> inside the window because Santa's going to rappel down the side of the house. And then you see the rope fall, and Santa come crashing down because <laughs> whatever it was attached to was not secure. <laughs> so you, it looks like a dummy, but it is a man because they go over and they look, and there's a dude just like, <laughs> I'm like trying to get up. <laughs> so you say that, and I think about uh, uh, the Santa Claus, you know, the one with the. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's funny. Uh, tonight, um, Nicholas was asking me, you know, something about how Santa Claus came about or whatever. And I was like, well, it kind of depends on the story. And I'm like, you know, according to some stories, you know, this happened, some other stories, this one. And I wanted to say, according to your grandmother's favorite version, you have to kill the previous Santa Claus to become him. So, <laughs> <laughs> which is actually what happens in that movie. It's like, oh, OK. So, well, that's why the, that ending of the movie is terrible, because he the kid wants to go into the family business. That means exactly. you want to exactly it's like, oh, it's cool. So you're going to take me out. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's on the naughty list. <laughs> um, 
Well, um, so tonight's episode uh, is, is going to be a very laid back one. Um, I threw out two different ideas to everyone, and we may still do the other one, which is a little more timely for Christmas. We may do that in January. We'll see. But um, it's the end of 2020. I don't have to tell anyone that's listening to this episode that 2020 has been a hell of a year. Mm -hmm. So um, instead of you know looking back at it next year, we're just going to kind of wrap everything up for this year, say fuck it, and uh, move on, hopefully. <laughs> um so, like I said, tonight we're just going to kind of look back at the year that was 2020. Um, I've got a list of a lot of interesting things that have happened. So, uh, not anything, you know, we're not going to, uh, in particular, you know, if someone's got a lot of stuff to say on something cool, if not, we'll just breeze on by it. So, it's not like we have to hit a bunch of, you know, have to hit any points or anything. So, um we're going to, like I said, we're going to start with the bad. And what's funny is, is before the show, I, I was mentioning this. I was like, we'll start with all the bad stuff. And then we can talk about some of the good stuff. And Jennifer was like, there was good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, um, I completely forgot about the, you know, the one great thing that happened. Okay. There were a couple other good things, but we'll, we'll get to that in just a bit. So with that being said, um, so, I, you know, it was only been, it's been, it hasn't even been a year ago since 2020 started but it feels like it was a decade ago um does anyone remember that? when like <laughs> almost all of fucking australia was on fire yes. in like, january oh yeah. my god yep. like was one it? billion yeah. animals were dead yeah that's mm -hmm. just crazy to me like if you were like well what was the worst things that happened on in 2020 that should have clearly been on the list mm -hmm. but it's like eh, maybe top 10 <laughs> it, and the it, rainforest. It, yeah, it's oh, top yeah. ten, but yeah, yeah. It, it, that one was crazy because I remember we were watching it because um, we have an environmentalist here, and <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I remember watching those those fires, and your heart goes out to them because like there's just nothing they can do, and I uh, I really remember thinking like holy shit like this is this is major the whole continent's on fire and then what was major really changed so yeah real quick <laughs> yeah um so yeah so shortly after this and i wrote this stuff pretty much kind of in, in chronological order so uh after that uh it was like man like australia's on fire this is this is fucking crazy and then it was like oh hey by the way we may be entering world war three um yeah that was fucked up too <laughs> when the iranian general that got killed and like a lot of you know uh saber rattling and a lot of big words being thrown around it was just like holy shit are you kidding me like like is it really the apocalypse like literally a fucking continent's on fire and we may be going to war with like everybody yeah so um Me? uh no no okay you're yes. right no <laughs> Yes. United yeah. States. Yeah. Yes, you're right. You're right. I was being a little secret there. Yeah. No, no we no. we didn't yeah. want anything to do with that. We tap out of that quick. <laughs> yeah. Story. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um, yeah. And then immediately after that, we had what we thought was a, a ray of light. Uh, at least for some of us. I I don't want to say this for everybody because I you know there may be a myriad of different people that watch and listen to this show. Uh, but for some of us, it was it was really hopeful when um, President Trump got impeached and like it happened and and then nothing else happened because the problem is is being Americans we think oh impeachment that means you're out no, no. it just means no. you're guilty doesn't mean we're going to do anything about it which that's one of those things I kind of wish I could go back in a time machine and be like listen guys I understand you know y'all are trying to come up with a new country this that and the other Maybe you should think this thing through. Like, if you get impeached, you're automatically out. Like, <laughs> so one of the things that America was built on, correct me if I'm wrong, please, but what I believe is true is that they were built on going against what the United Kingdom was about, which was a monarchy. So one person had too much power. So then they create this presidential position that has too much power. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of interesting. It's but it's, checks and balances. Yeah, the three yeah, when, branches of the government. When they were way back there and actually mattered, <laughs> before the freaking you know court became, oh no, we're gonna we're gonna do political stuff. No, no, that wasn't your job. Like, mm -hmm. how about y'all stay out of the politics and y'all figure out what's right and wrong and the 
the you know it's supposed to we're supposed to make the laws not not the executive branch you're not the one who's supposed to be making them you're, the legislative yeah, just branch awful. is supposed to hold the executive accountable but ours has not done that for four years oh no. <laughs> well i'd honestly, say two because half of the legislative branch has tried to but I, honestly though they haven't really it's funny because you just held up your your jug yes. they're drinking out of and it disappeared that was kind of awesome oh, uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> um but for anyone watching the video version um yeah, it's it's just it's one of those things that just really highlights. But I mean, going back, like it, it's it's very obvious right now. But it's just like, yeah, like things have been screwed up for quite a while. Like we just keep sliding around. It's we really need to kind of hit a reset button. The only problem is those the only reset button I can think of is going to cause a lot of pain for a we lot of people. We don't want that one. We don't want. Yeah, that one. we don't want that one. So <laughs> anyway. Um, Let's see here. What was next on my list? Oh yeah, uh, COVID. That yeah. Nope. Thing. <laughs> Just a like little. The rest of the list. Defining. You forgot Kobe died. <laughs> what? Yeah, Kobe died in the. Kobe actually, 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 I had that next because yeah. COVID actually started before that. But let's let's hit that first. So, I'm not a sports fan, even the even in the slightest. Um, but I mean, it's sad. It's sad if, when someone dies, especially because it was him and his daughter that died, and. Uh, there was a lot of outpouring for, of support for him. Um, so, uh, any sports fans? Anyone want to chip in on that one? What you got for us? It, it was just uh, yes. There are some things that he had done in his past that probably weren't great. Yeah. But after that, he had tried so hard to do so much for, especially. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna, Jen. Tell me if I'm using this word correctly. Disenfranchised youth. Uh, especially minority, like black children. And he tried to do so much for them. And then he was just gone. And there was like this vacuum and this void of uh, someone to be there for them. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was, okay. So here's one of the other things that I'm coming to, I don't want to say coming to grips with, coming to realize, like I told my brother the other day, we were talking about something. I'm getting to the point, like when I hear someone say, oh, well, nothing, you know, it's not a perfect movie, uh, but blah, blah, blah. And then they go on and I'm just like, you know what? Can we just get rid of that saying? Because nothing is a perfect movie. No one is a perfect man or woman. Yes, people people screw up. The thing is, is can you overcome it? Can you can you rise above it? Can you do something to make it better? Uh, I mean, there are definitely people who are worse than others, but um <laughs> See previous comment about Trump. Anyway, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's 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 just one of those things. It's like, yeah, you you fucked up. You did some stuff you shouldn't have done. But like you said, then he spent a lot, you know, the rest of his time, you know, trying to help people. So it is what it is. Um, oh, Lane, Lane, you got back. No, sorry, I fell asleep. I'm exhausted and completely forgot it was Saturday. Three. <laughs> Blame. How, how come she texted you back first before me? Yeah. <laughs> I still haven't gotten anything from her. Did you leave a pathetic <laughs> voicemail? <laughs> um, all right, so let's talk about COVID. I remember hearing about it, and yeah. oh, it uh, was... May I interject really quickly? Absolutely, go ahead. Uh, I want to apologize on behalf of myself for COVID. So there have been times throughout this year... That where I have just kind of said these offhanded comments, and it turns out that they happened. And I was in a staff meeting in late January with my company, and we were talking about some stuff that we were going to do this year, we were, uh, all these great plans. We were going to open up a new location, do all these kind of things. And I just made this offhanded comment about, hey, did you guys know that every 20 decade, uh, going back to the 1500s, there's been like this plague or pandemic that's happened? And there's something like that. And then it happens. Joseph! <laughs> uh, it's all your fault. You yeah. Exactly. <sighs> that's not the only prediction I made for this year, but uh, that's not what we're talking about. Well, we'll get okay. to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I remember hearing about COVID and just like... <laughs> It, it was it, to me. It was it was it was scary. It was a scary idea, but at the time, it was still in China. Yeah. And it was like, okay, this could be a big thing. Um. But honestly, the thing that I, the only thing, other thing I had to compare it to was SARS, and mm -hmm. that ended up being a lot about nothing. And it was just like, 
okay, well, maybe maybe it does make its way over here, kind of, or, or bird flu. Actually, that's what I originally compared it for, was, was bird flu. It was like, it never really hit like everyone was expecting. So I kind of was hoping, in the back of my mind, was thinking, well, hopefully this won't be, hopefully this will be about on that level. Hopefully it's not too bad, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'll never forget, though, in March, though, like, we are – you know, my wife and I are school teachers and we are about to go on spring break. And like the people are starting to throw, are we coming back after spring break? Are we going to get locked down? And then all the crazy shit happened. And I, I felt like it was as close as I'm hopefully ever going to get to a post-apocalyptic world. But instead of like, you know, driving around in this badass vehicle, you know, dressed like fucking Mad Max and Road Warrior, you know, looking for gas or something like that. No, it's me wearing a dust mask in my Ford Flex looking for toilet paper. Like, it's just like, what (laughs) the fuck? Yeah, pandemics Um, are much less exciting than the movies make them out to be. Yeah. It's okay, though. That's fine. I'm okay with that. That's okay. Right. It's just a lot of... Social I wanted zombies. And... No, I you wanted know. zombies. No. Let me tell you. Don't say so... it because what you say comes true. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Knock on wood. So here's the thing. Like, see, and we did an episode on this already talking about going back and looking at movies that were like, oh, no, that couldn't happen. We wouldn't be that stupid. Surely we would figure out things ahead of time. And it's like, no, after COVID, I completely believe it. Like, so. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the things that got me were, I mean, I understand we didn't know exactly how, at first we didn't know how it was spreading. We were shutting mm-hmm. absolutely everything down. People were afraid, you know, the supply chains were completely falling apart, which they never actually did. That was kind of the thing. But you couldn't get through people's heads that, hey, I know you've already got 20 rolls of toilet paper staffed at home. You really don't need to keep getting it. It's going to be okay. Leave some for everyone else. And just, you could not get it through to other people's heads. Yeah. Um so we had to start getting creative. Like literally I ran the first place I went was the little convenience store up here, like right around from my house. And I was like, Hey, they have toilet paper. I'm going to buy the toilet paper here because I don't know if I'm going to find it anywhere else. And sure enough, it was crazy. Toilet paper, um, meat Yeast. was hard to get a hold of. Bread was a hard, hard to get a hold of until I think Jen's the one that, um, turned me on to the little, uh, shop down here. Um, that actually sells bread or whatever. In fact, I actually have a couple of loaves of it frozen in my deep oh, freeze. Yeah. Uh, it was a restaurant, right? That it's, started selling uh, it. A bagel, it's a little bagel shop. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, kind of yeah. To, to find some different things. What's crazy is, is as of today, I still have a hard time finding uh, Clorox wipes. Just, yeah. you can't really find the damn things. So. Well, I remember when we first started hearing about it and it was one of those, it kind of reminded me of SARS, right? Where I was like, okay, Mm -hmm. it might affect the cities, but we should be fine up here was what was going on in my head. And, uh, but I didn't think it was going to shut down anything. And so we were still planning on going to Florida in March, April, April. it was going to be April. And, uh, and then, yeah, I remember we heard a couple other little things of like, you know, there might be actually it was the NBA player. Uh, who was it that he touched all the microphones and then he got it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know his name, but I know who you're, I I know who you're talking about. Anyway, yeah. so I remember seeing that, and then it was shortly after that they, things started shutting down. Yeah, like things Cancel. really started. So the NBA shut down their season. Uh, the NHL shut down theirs, but we were driving in a car on our car, and it was something. It was a big convention, and when it, we heard that that shut down, we kind of looked at each other and was like, maybe we should just hold off on this whole Florida trip. <laughs> like, it's, it's insane right now. So we did. We called my parents to let them know, and they were like, yeah, we were kind of wondering, because they were down in Florida at the time. They were like, yeah, we were kind of wondering if you were going to be doing that, so that's fine. No problem. We're going to close it all up, and we'll just come back a little bit later. Fast forward a week, they're, we're calling them, begging them to get back because – like the Canadian government's talking about shutting, shutting down the their down. shutting not only the borders down, but also if the Canadians can't get back, that they're like going to cut off their health care and like it's just like holy shit. Jeez. <laughs> so they got back safe and sound and everything, but yeah, it's it was. Uh, I remember the beginning of this. It was oh, I did not deal well with it at all. <laughs> no, the beginning of this was very 
the I don't know if it, what I was watching, but it made it seem very scary that you would have. We lived in our cottage, which is only 620 square feet. So what I was hearing was that you had you couldn't leave your house for at least two weeks. So you had to stock up with at least two weeks worth of, of food, food worth and of food, water and 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 yeah. everything to keep you hunkered down. And that might get extended to a month. So I'm looking at my little itty bitty house, like where the literal fuck am I going to stuff two weeks worth of food? I can't. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. I did no room for it. There was nowhere to put it because we also had a cat who's batshit crazy about food and you have to like yeah. hide it from her. She gets into it. <laughs> so I remember just crying. Like, I don't know what we're going to do. We can't store enough food here for that. And, and thankfully we'd already sold the, or no. by, not by that point, but we had the place up for. No, we had sold it. Oh yes, yeah, Sorry. We had, we had sold, sold it. it by that point. But we were looking. But we were still looking, and we hadn't found anything to go to yet. So that yeah. was a whole other. Yeah, that was a whole other thing. Weird. We had nowhere to go after our house sold. When you Imagine. said your cat is crazy and, and gets into the food, I know you're talking about like boxes and stuff like that. But I just pictured her with a can opener, just like. <laughs> if she could do it. If she had the dexterity. She fucks. <laughs> she would, because <laughs> she steals toast out of the toaster. If oh my god. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. No, no, like, like this is. You can see her creeping. If we have pizza, she can't be near you. I had, I we had um, salami in the house. We had charcuterie board like a couple weeks ago for dinner. She and I cut it up for lunch. She would not leave me alone. I had yeah. to walk around. I couldn't sit down because she tried to steal it out of my hand. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Well, she's eating. Well, I'm like trying it's... to eat it. <laughs> so I had to walk around and eat my lunch so the cat wouldn't get me. And That's I couldn't hilarious. stay at the table because she'd get on, she'd the, get table on the table yeah. and try to jump on me. So I couldn't store two weeks of food in my little itty bitty house. No. <laughs> so I got no. very upset about that. And then with the kids schooling, they made it seem like the parents were totally responsible. And I'm like, there's a reason why I sent them to school. Mm -hmm. Like, No. No, yeah, I can't that, do this. I can't be responsible for their education. I had that got down. that got interesting, and yeah. then then and then it it, it it got better obviously yeah. as everything went. But uh, I remember when they first announced March break was extended. Yeah, the kids were really excited, and then as that went on, they were got less excited. It was less and less exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Not even more. They were like, "What the fuck? I want to go to school." Yeah, yeah. Miss my friends. <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. what made it obvious that for me that it was getting serious was um, I was actually like on a plane to Memphis and I get off and I have a message from Eugene saying, hey, sorry to hear about South by Southwest being canceled. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard this yet. He was the one that told me because I literally had just turned my phone back on and um. I, I was supposed, I think I left on a Friday and I was supposed to start, you know, or no, I think I left on a Wednesday. I was supposed to go on Monday and yeah, I had to like deal with, you know, the fallout of that while I was in between planes and then fly back, you know, on a plane while everything was kind of going crazy. Yeah. yeah. I think I, I got back in town like the day before, you know, the big, the shit hit the fan and everybody started going to lockdown, but Yeah. It wasn't managed very well either by our government, so th we shouldn't still be in the place that we're in. It should be a lot better. <laughs> but well, I mean, okay, so and that was part of the problem. And I understand they were trying to come to grips. They were trying to figure out exactly how this thing spreads and and why it spreads and this that and the other. Because you know we were like, oh well, don't touch anything and and wear gloves and and you know every, like basically just shut yourself completely off. And now it's like, no, wear a mask and stay six plus feet away from people and you're pretty good so but you know back then we didn't know that so it was like everyone was like trying to find you know a 95 mask and everything else and then there was that whole back and forth thing about you know the cdc really screwed up yeah. and they're you know at first they were like oh no cough mask aren't going to help and they're like no actually i guess it will and it's just like too late you already let the horse out of the barn all the idiots already think it's not going to help and they're already going to fight you which of course they did and they um, do they still and do they still do, do. Are. Still do. So what I thought was interesting about that was they they should have been able to predict that because the same thing happened in the Spanish flu. The, the Spanish flu, there was this whole anti-mask movement, mm -hmm. and that uh, the rights were being taken away uh, from. And so I'm just I'm baffled at why we didn't learn from that one. Because it was well, too long. It doesn't 
it doesn't help when the president of the United States goes up to say the CDC recommends you wear a mask. I don't. And then <laughs> just keep going. That? Yes. He said that. He said, oh. that. He, he said it's just a speech. You don't have to. And, <gasps> and I wouldn't. And I'm not going to. Is yes, basically. exactly. That, that's almost his word. That's almost word for word. Ray actually. And then he got thing. COVID. <laughs> Right, but I have never wished for somebody to get COVID so bad than him, but like he didn't get it enough. He didn't get I it. still wonder if he got That's it. The thing. I'm, I'm still questioning like, it too. I'm like, either this is a publicity son, he doesn't actually have it because this is just proving to his base that COVID isn't a big deal, so he's walking away from it, or he actually got it but got pumped full of so many drugs because he has the ability to do that and the privilege to have the best doctors at his disposal. That, that is his, chloroquine. Yeah, and he never Jesus. got a chance to, to do anything because he's the demographic that should have been 70 years old. Or how is he? Mm-hmm. He's in his 70s. 72. Yep. 74. 74 now. And then you had these weird, like, hybrid things where people wore masks but really didn't. Uh, you know, the whole thing about only covering their mouth. Uh-huh. And this. Or, I don't know. Did you all see what the uh, Texas A&M band did at a football game recently? No. No. no? I'm going to. I'm going to do a thing. Uh, oh, Lord. Do it. Where is my share screen button? Oh. Uh, right Uh-oh. Here. Uh-oh. You'll okay. have to narrate for those at home. Yeah. Oh, can you see Are this? Are you serious? <laughs> yes. So the Texas A&M Aggies, no, uh, they cut a hole... Uh, oh, in their masks? In their masks so that they could play their instruments, but they still have the rest of their face covered. But <laughs> no. Like, why even wear the mask? Why? So, so for anyone who is either not in Texas or aware of Texas A&M or anything well, so associated yeah. to that, um, they are Aggies and they are not known. The joke is they are not known for being the smartest mm-hmm. university. Uh, maybe it's just because they're an ag program, but yeah, they're not known for their brains, to put it mildly. <laughs> so this just kind of reinforces that. Like, I, <laughs> Jesus. Um, yeah, and then the whole mask thing about, you know, it has to be this quality or it has to do this. Or ha- and then, of course, there were face shields and, yeah. um, you know, face shields help protect the mask, not you. And yet I still see people walking around with just the face shield and I'm just like, you're not yes. doing anything. Well, that's um, in the wording, right? Like as long as your face is covered. Yes. And that's the problem. Kind of is, it up to you. Yeah. That's everyone wanted to be a politician about this crap. Yes. No one wanted to stand up and actually be a leader. And that goes all the way down through the state to our local government, to our, even our fucking school board. No one wanted to be a leader. There, there is one person, oh, it's the, the world leader that I will absolutely commend. Jacinda. Jacinda! What an amazing job she did. Oh my yes. God, she's my what? fucking hero. She is awesome. Yeah. And you know what? I'm. We were saying it too. Like, if they had have come out to all Canadians and said, listen, it's not going to be two weeks. We are shutting this thing down for a good month where you're going to be, you know, you're going to have to go to the grocery store, get your, and that's like, that's it. That's all you're going to be able to do is just that very bare minimum things. If they had done that for a month instead of what they did, then it, it would have been they better. They just left now, room for doubt. That's then they, the then they started, okay, well now it's just two more weeks. Now it's just two. And they kept extending it by a couple of weeks and instead of being honest with everybody and saying, like, we don't know what's going on right now. We need to shut down, figure out, start doing testing, do all that, and then we'll start easing up on things. And if they had it done it that way and had have actually started testing people that didn't have symptoms, because that was a whole nother thing. Oh, yeah. Um, then that could have that could have really given us a better picture of where everything was. But it, it, it was but, the wishy-washiness. It was giving yeah. people an option. And it was like, no, masks are mandatory. This is what you have to do. End of discussion. Yeah. Done. This is temporary. We're going to do this. It's going to be suck for four months because I think that's how long I think it was, uh, New Zealand did. It was like four months of like really strict lockdown. Yeah. Where and, you could go out for like essentials yes. only. Yeah, yeah. And that's it. Um, but we're going to we're going to do this. And then. Yeah. Hopefully we'll see like now. Granted, it. it's easier to do it on an island nation, yeah. but oh, sure, sure. But still, yeah. like she, she got, she kicked it in the butt like before yeah. it got out of hand. 
they were already back to having full on people in stadiums and like yeah, they're back to normal now. They're, they're more or less more yeah. or less normal. Yeah. And we're stuck, you know, in limbo. In limbo because our governments can't fucking get. Their well, kids it, the problem is, is that I understand that they're trying to keep the economy going, and I understand that. We absolutely need to get. Uh, I understand that part of it. But uh, which country was it? Uh, Spain. They they stopped, or was it Spain or Germany? Mm-hmm. Hey, anyway, one of them had stopped all uh, all payments. Like you didn't have to pay for your mortgage or your uh, your any pay any payments. Essentially, sounds was, like Germany. Sounds like something they do. <laughs> yeah. So it was a pause so that you you could actually get through this, and instead of having to pay it back this year. It's you tack it on to the end so that you, you know, you pay a little bit longer than what you would have. And that makes sense. So it's, yeah, it's frustrating to see what's going on in some, some of these countries and some of our countries. And yeah. Yeah. And then you've got states like Texas where the governor says, we will not go back into lockdown no matter what. It's like, cool. It's we're going into the worst month of the year. It's Yay. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then Prince Harry and Meghan Markle were like, "Yep, deuces, we're out." And it's like, Come back are you to Canada. Kidding me? <laughs> that didn't last long. Canada, the states, like it no, was. No, uh... they, they, we were just a layover. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, we're just. We're gonna fly to Canada and live there for two seconds, and then. <laughs> and then we're gonna set up camp in the states. I'm not surprised. Oh, I called it right away. They're, oh yeah. It's like they're not, not staying in Canada. <laughs> no, I'm not surprised that he said I'm out. I'm not surprised with all oh, of the no, stuff that, that she'd been yeah. going through, and it it had to it had to have been traumatizing. He probably would have had flashbacks of what his mom had dealt with, and he blames the media for his mom's death. And he did not. It's hard not to. Yeah. So yeah. how could he not see and worry that this was going to happen again? So yeah. I think he was just like, I, I can't do this again. I don't want to lose my wife. She's pregnant. Now. We're done. We're out. Sorry, Queenie. We're done. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I don't Grandma. blame. I don't blame them one bit. I don't either. Not, no. not one bit. I'm just like, you know what? Uh, that took a lot of guts to do it, and I'm just it, like, good for it, y'all. It so. did a lot of guts, and it t- because. His life is so, even though he's that spare, his life is so controlled. Oh, yeah. Right? Like, he, he's still in this bubble that he, he had stuff he could do and stuff he couldn't do. And it, it must have been very isolating and very lonely to, to be like that. You yeah. know, to, to have no freedom and no real decision making in your life. Because your grandmother gets to decide everything for you. You know? And you can't yeah. go against that and the traditions and everything. Yeah, it would be yeah. horrible. It would it would be very very that would lonely. You lonely. Said, I mean, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. It would be very lonely. Um, this next one I have it, it's in the bad section, and it's I guess it's it's horrible because of what happened, but the outcome actually wasn't too bad. Um, Harvey Weinstein got convicted of rape, and oh, they God. finally nailed that son of a bitch. Yeah. Um. Of course, he did the shit that he did for decades, um, and it, it's it's horrible that it it happened in the first place. But at least they nailed the asshole. So, um, but yeah, that was that was one of the big things. Um, but that was minor compared to the next thing I had on my list. Um, so George Floyd is killed by a police officer flat out. That's, that's all the way you can look at it. And we start getting riots, um, which was, oh God, that was so hard to watch. You want to, you, you want to, you want to see people, you know, get out and, and protest and, and make their voices heard. But at the same time, you're like, no, stay inside. You're possibly spreading this shit. Like you're going to make it worse. Um, it was just, it could not have come at a worse time. Um, oh, but my God, it was. There was so much crap going on, and still to this day, we have we have cities that are still just in turmoil over mm-hmm. this. And unfortunately, not a lot has changed. And who knows if it is or not. Yeah. It was um, very difficult for me to not do that, like, physically. I wanted to get out there every weekend and protest and, you know, be in it. But I was just, like, so scared, you know, of this virus. And it was still pretty early on in all this. So we yes, didn't know, you know, 
a lot about how it spread. And even though people were wearing masks, it was like. Yeah, it was crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we lost Jen for a second there. So. Okay, she's back, I think. Yeah. So. Um, that I that I, that affected us up here as well, uh, because there's there's some stuff going on out east with uh, uh, a fight between the natives and and the, the fisheries and mm-hmm. uh, racism is still a thing and it's got to be it's got to be talked about and it's got to be we got to get over this somehow and realize that we're all, you know, we're all humans and we all need to get to get along and like fucking let people live, man. Like it's <laughs> aliens. It's going to take aliens. It's going to take aliens. an alien invasion force to finally say, no, what we're all, we're all cool. We've got to find someone else to hate. It's what's going to take, unfortunately. So, yeah. um, and then we had fucking, now this is something that didn't really go anywhere yet. Hopefully it doesn't. Uh-huh. Um, because there were a lot of jokes about it. It was like, well, what are we getting this month? Oh, murder hornets. Who had murder <laughs> hornets on bingo? No one? Yeah, I couldn't have predicted that fucking thing. Um, I know it was more of a warning, but they did finally find a nest, and oh my god. That that, that is no joke. Those things are huge. <laughs> so I'm hoping, I'm hoping we can get control of that, um, unlike, you know, the Afri- Africanized killer bees that, you know, we just kind of fumbled that football and just oh hey guess what they're everywhere now so <laughs> my bad so the interesting thing with that one uh was i i guess they're looking at potentially trying to introduce uh thanks Dog hair. uh more european uh honeybees over because they the way that they fight i don't have you seen the way that the european honeybees fight these murder no. So they'll actually create a ball of bees around the hornet and up their temperature to the point that it it cooks the murder hornet. And Are to you the kidding point, me? Yeah. Yeah, so it, it cooks the, the hornet and it kills them and then the bees just continue on their way. That's terrifying. It's, it's, <laughs> there was a episode of Family Guy where they had a fake nature, school, a nature show called Dan Nature You Scary. <laughs> that, would be on there. that would definitely for sure yeah. <laughs> yes um well back to nature uh y'all remember when the the saharan dust storm hit oh. our continent it was just like are you kidding me like <laughs> that made some pretty good pictures yes oh, it, it did it was pretty <laughs> oh i didn't remember that <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it. Um, like there San were parts Francisco, of the, you couldn't see anything, right? Like it was all red. It was crazy. That was also that was partially like because a, of the fires. Mm-hmm. But um, it like a scene out of uh, Blade uh, Runner. Blade Runner. Yes, yeah. it did straight mm-hmm. out straight up look like Blade Runner. Um, God, that was crazy ass too. Um, let's see here. Oh, geez. Now the, I only had three. I only have three more things listed on here, so. The 2020 presidential United United States presidential election, which has been going on for the last four fucking years, years. <laughs> like yeah, God, I remember I when. Elections. It's funny when you know, I, and I've heard people talk, and I remember when I was young. I remember like no one really started like there was like we talked a little bit about about it in the beginning of the year that it happened because that's when some of the 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 caucuses and stuff would get together. But other than oh that, Oh my like, God, the Iowa caucus. Remember that? That was a huge thing back in February. And then, uh, huh. it's like, it okay, oh, hey, like we're going to do stuff on an app. And it just completely was fucked yeah, up. It was a disaster. Yeah. Um, but we have been dealing with, basically people have been campaigning for the last four years. And unfortunately I'm afraid it's going to happen again. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, everyone's joking about quote unquote president grandpa, but at least he won't be on Twitter every other day stirring shit up. Um, but yeah, like this has been, this has been so crazy. I mean, th- the fact that, you know, we had several, the Democratic Party had several progressive people that were gaining momentum. And then all of a sudden we get centrist Voltron and we get Biden. It's just like, what? Like literally one day he's in third place and the next thing, oh no, he's it. It's done. Bye. 
it's just like, what the fuck happened? Like, yeah, I was going to say that because um, it did feel like, like all of last year and this, you know, the beginning of this year, it was just nonstop campaigns and debates and blah, blah, blah. And then suddenly um, he pulls up in front after, you know, we started out with like Pete and Amy doing better in some states, and then uh, Bernie looked like he was going to do good. Liz looked, and then suddenly it was just like, no, it's Biden, and we're all we're all going to back him. <laughs> like what? Oh no! Oh man! Um, yeah, Joseph just had to step off for a second. Um, if you're watching the video version, you may have seen why. So, um, mm-hmm. damn. Um. Yeah, so, yeah, the election was crazy because, like I said, we've been dealing with it. And it's funny because, you know, our Canadian friends are, it's not your election, but, God, y'all, y'all couldn't get away from it either. No one could get away from it. Like, nobody could. The whole world was so involved with it. And we're, obviously, everyone was pulling, I say everyone, there are a couple of nations that were probably going the other way. Mm -hmm. Russia. Um, (laughs) Brazil. Yeah. Um. But, you know, the rest of it was just everyone was just like hoping and praying. And then it comes down and and we're still I mean, it is technically done, but it's not done yet. And it's just the electors still have to vote. Yes. <laughs> have to happen. I thought it was done. No. What? I don't think that the happens votes until... are finalized. OK. Yeah. This just takes way too long. I don't understand. Oh, no, it's it so does. stupid. It's so Got stupid. It. Like ours are what, Sean? Like 72 days was the longest one. And the... I'm not even that long. Not you guys. Yeah. You guys aren't even allowed to campaign for uh, like uh, until uh, six weeks before, right? Uh, uh, I think eight four. weeks is the longest, right? See, it's like we have four like eight weeks. years of that. Eight, eight's the longest. Eight's the longest. Yeah, and I can't remember an election going that long. No, but I know it's just like all of a sudden there's an election, we vote, then it's done, yep. and it's not like a like you guys have like a two month process where trump's still the president um except he thinks he's never leaving it's um, terrible yeah and then that president and then joe biden's not taking over until january isn't it for us the prime minister is basically like there's a that, really quick it's it's a quick transition quick turnover basically the when the election happens we uh our uh our whole system pauses and then we make the election and then the next then the next week the new yeah. Person. Person. It the makes so much General sense. Yes, it does. Parliament and then mm-hmm. it, it swear in the new prime minister and the new parties. And, yeah. it's, it's it's pretty done. done. Yeah, like it's it's, they really- should have a time limit and a spending limit on our yes. elections because yes. it's ridiculous the amount of money it takes to run an election. And we shouldn't have to be worrying about this for two years before. You know? People are spending exhausting. millions it of really dollars is. and losing even. And it's just like... Yeah. Cool. We a hundred million dollars was just spent to try to get someone elected, and it didn't go through. What could so we have wasteful. done with a hundred million dollars? Oh, I don't know. Put it towards education, healthcare, climate change, the homeless, climate change. Yeah, there's. Yeah. It's disgusting how much money, yeah, goes into it. And where, but where does that money actually go? Is the question, right? Like, ads. A lot of it's ads, but yeah. But again, where does that staffers? Money? So I guess technically some of it is going to help employment, but yeah, whatever. But that can't be a sustainable <laughs> system. Not. Like that can't. It's, not. It, it's gonna have to stop soon. Like you're, if you're talking about billions of dollars being spent on these campaigns, that's that's like <laughs> money's gonna run out soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you would think, but um, and then this was a big one for for Jen. Um, RBG. Oh, which yeah. you would have thought would have been a like you would have thought there was going to be a bigger fight but apparently apparently it was like no we're going to let this one go because we don't want to stir the pot before the election and it's just like so okay. disappointing mm-hmm. he already stole two other seats so <laughs> I mean one of them I guess was technically legitimate yeah. but would I would I have a problem with that whole scenario was the Republicans four years ago had that whole and the, every one of them no we won't no we won't no we yep. won't and then oh you you can't put you can't no, no that was four years ago i was like fuck you i'm sorry you need to be held accountable they this, are such hypocrites like that that to me should have that was the 
moment that they should have lost any election. Like, uh, if you're going to turn on your word like that, fuck you, because you're not... Yeah. Out- all you're in for is power, and that's it. You don't. When they refused to confirm Merrick Garland four years ago because it was quote unquote an election year, and that was like what nine or ten months before the election. Oh yeah, it was and way earlier. They, they turned around and and confirmed Amy Coney Barrett like two months yeah. before the election or less. Like yeah. that's bullshit. Yeah. That is such hypocritical bullshit. I was. I'm just still yep. seething from that. <laughs> like. Well, what? Oh. Her, though she's standing on what Ruth Bader did for women yeah. she's able to yep. be in the supreme exactly. court because of her and yep. the fact that she's going to overturn the things that or try to she may not get potentially to, yeah. she's going to you know can do that is that's just privilege right there staring you right in yep. the face she doesn't understand how much privilege she's got as a as a woman because of ruth yeah, yeah. yep uh it's funny i was one of the podcast the political podcasts i listen to they he had on some guests and they were talking about their ideas to help quote unquote fix the Supreme court. And I don't remember what the other one, there were a couple of theories that they put out there. And one of the ones that they put out there was, and I don't remember exactly how they did it, but it was basically, uh, there should be 15 justices, uh, five are picked by one side, five are picked by the other. And the other five have to be like, like it has to be even vote. Like if you can't vote on them together, tough, then yeah. they're not going in. And I was like, okay, that's kind of an interesting way to do it. And then there was something that they had proposed about, um, number one, doesn't matter either side. I am completely and totally against unlimited terms. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's got to be term limits. Because I mean, even even you know some of the some of the justices that are in there, it's like, okay, you know, I understand you're technically supposed to be looking at the law and applying it, but. You know, when it comes to stuff, especially like computers, hacking, stuff like that, some of y'all ain't got a fucking clue. Like, (laughs) y'all's time was a long time ago. We need some newer blood in there. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, so that was that was kind of a big thing. Um, Anything else anyone wants to throw in there on the on the shit side of 2020? Um. We didn't talk about uh, well. John Lewis passed away, and Chadwick Boseman, Chadwick Boseman. Yep. Yes. passed away. Yeah. That really sucked. Both of those. Yeah, um, yeah. Both man, that was hard, especially finding out that he's been he'd been dealing with cancer for the last several years and just kept yeah. working, kept Nobody going. Knew. Was going to the kids' cancer wards. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was crazy. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and then people were um, body shaming him near the end because he had yeah, lost a lot of weight, yeah, yeah. and there was and and people were making fun of him for it. Yeah, mm. yeah, because he he was well, he, he got was sick, thin, but he was dying. You know, he he was so sick, and nobody knew. No, like even his co-stars didn't know. Nobody knew. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, um would you consider Tiger King a good or a bad thing? <laughs> we're gonna get to that in a second. <laughs> we're gonna get to that in a second. Uh, the explosions in Beirut. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Three hundred thousand people left homeless. Yeah. yeah, that was that was crazy watching yeah. that video. Yeah. So that was a hell of an explosion. Mm-hmm. Um, just recently here we lost. Um, I cannot remember the gentleman's name. The man who played Vader. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, which, if y'all read, if y'all remember reading the book, remember he had, you know, there was he was upset because he didn't get to voice Vader and was at a convention and just throw out threw out the idea that oh well Vader is probably Luke's dad or whatever and they're like, yeah okay whatever crazy and then, so, um and then what was it yesterday day before we lost um um uh the guy who played Debo in. Mm-hmm. In the Friday movies, and still cracks me up that they got him to play the president in <laughs> oh, <laughs> Idiocracy. And Idiocracy. Oh God, that was so. That, awesome. He was great in that. Yeah. Oh. Um, it wasn't. No, no, wasn't, no, no. It's a uh, no. uh, Fifth Element. Fifth, fifth Element. element. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, you're th- a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, President of the so, World. Universe. Or the Universe. Yeah, universe yeah, or something like yeah, that. It yeah. was good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, so... Uh, a, a positive, the 2020 Olympics got uh, kiboshed for who knows how long. That's a good thing. <laughs> Did you all see the article about the 2024 Olympics and the events that they added? No. Uh, break dancing. Break dancing. Are you serious? Yes. And 
There was a third, but I don't remember. What was it? Break dancing? What was the second one? Skateboarding. Skateboarding. Okay. I See, yeah, skateboarding, I'm supportive of. That's they have sure. snowboarding. Okay. Snowboarding and, and skateboarding are pretty parallel. Here's something that I saw someone I, th- years ago. I saw someone post this, and I think they were posting it as a joke. But in all honesty, I would be like, no. Absolutely, because if you watch these people perform, they are absolutely athletes. Um, are you gonna say pole, tank? Da- pole dancing. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you know the ab strength you have to have for that. Oh yeah, your legs, oh. man. I like it's I basically just kind of. I mean, granted, they wouldn't be completely naked or almost naked while they're doing this on the Olympics. They would be in you know some kind of a unitard or whatever. But it's just like, it's it's basically dance. It's basically like doing the gymnastic poles, but instead of being horizontal, now they're vertical. And you're right. The amount of strength and stuff is just like, I remember let these ladies go line. do their thing. Like that would be awesome. And if there one, if there's a dude, sure. Go for it, man. So <laughs> I remember blowing Elaine's mind when I told her that the pole spins, the pole. Spins. Oh <laughs> yeah. It does. The, the pole rotates. Yeah. When they're, when they're on it. That's crazy. Yeah, cut down on the chafing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. That's the practical. Mm. Um, now, if it was order... using the talcum powder, it's like pum, pum, and then in the thighs. <laughs> like the LeBron James thing. Yep. With the, the chalk. Yeah. There you go. All right. Well, before we wrap up the, the bad section, uh, of course, of all the shit that happened this year, uh, my dad passing just will absolutely cement this as being one of the absolute fucking worst years ever. Um, it wasn't COVID that got him. He had he basically had a heart attack, and uh, you know I, I still think about him a lot. Yeah, it's hard, uh, especially with the holidays coming up. But you know this through all of this, it's just it sucked because when we had his funeral, we didn't even know if we were going to be able to have a funeral. Like it was so still so up in the air. So, um, but yeah, like. And then, of course, all the other events that got canceled, you know, EGX got canceled. Our our yearly Geeks Weekend got canceled, which, you know, he loved to go to and just it sucked. So and I lost one of my grandmothers um, when not super close to her, but still. And, and she did die of COVID. Um, so, you know, um, I know people at the place that I work. COVID and luckily are recovering, but. Um, the one may be forced into medical retirement and the other one is still not out of the woods yet. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's real and it's bullshit and it sucks. Yeah. So, um, so as, as, as Jen said, well, there's at least one good thing. There are several good things that (laughs) happened. Uh, what is the one good thing that you knew, Jen? Well, it was Biden getting elected. Um, but also Hamilton came out on Disney Plus, <laughs> so that's a, a huge one for me because I can watch it whenever I want. <laughs> well, most of the other stuff that I have on here is media related. Um, so now this is not this is the, the, what I'm about to talk about is um, not definite. Like they've come out and said it, and there's some blowback, but. Um, Warner Brothers basically came out earlier last week and said, yeah, so for Wonder Woman, we're going to release it in the theaters and on HBO Max at the same time. It's going to stay there for a month and then it'll go back to this. And then last week they came out and said, yeah, we're going to do that with everything in 2021, period. Full stop. All Mm -hmm. of our movies. And this is something that we've been waiting for. That 90-day window is, at least by Warner Brothers, possibly finally going away. Now, this could be good or bad for movie theaters. Like, you know, there's a lot of talk. How are they going to survive this, that, and the other? And I'll be honest with you. I don't know if the multiplex survives. Like, why would you necessarily go to the movie theater, you know, especially a cheap movie theater, if you've got a decent home system? Um, But I still want to go for big movies, like, you know, Marvel movies or or Star Wars movies. or I still want to go to the movie theater for that because it could be an experience. And like I was telling my partner at work, I have a nice TV. I have a nice surround sound system, but unless everyone in the family is watching the same thing I'm watching, it's not like I can crank it up, 
You know what I'm saying? And then I have to constantly worry about and now that I have the puppy running around barking, chasing the cat. And it's just like, no, I want to go to a movie theater with popcorn and watch it. And I don't I'm want like to popcorn. Yeah. yeah, I think. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of theories that maybe movie theaters are about to hit another evolution and it's going, yeah, they may get more expensive, but it's going to be an event. You're going to go and they're sure as hell going to make sure people aren't talking. And maybe instead of, yes, most of them have upgraded to nicer seats. You may be getting like full on recliners or couches or whatever and having like, like not just iPad. popcorn. <laughs> yes. Like more theaters may have to start going to this type of model, which it's fine. Some of the other stuff that I've heard people talk about, um, Brian Brushwood, who who does a lot of stuff in the Austin area, there was an independent movie theater across from him that, after COVID hit, shut down. Someone else has rolled in there and opened it back up, and one of the ways that they're surviving is he goes, that movie theater is packed every Sunday morning because they figured out one of the local – they were working with one of the local churches. The church is still able to have their congregation because they come in and they get – all of the theaters, so everyone is spread out, and they broadcast everything on the big screen. And they're like, why are we doing more events like that? Like, you you could have been able to do stuff like that previously, but it was, like, ungodly expensive. Nobody like, thought about it. You just, you have the room. Do something with it. Some other people have been talking, like, you know, the Fathom events where they do stuff? Like, unfortunately, they don't tend to take, you know, advantage of the, the surround sound, but they're like... Yes, you could go spend several hundred dollars on a concert ticket, or would you want to go sit in a movie theater for, say, $30, 40 to have surround sound and the, the band playing up on the big screen live? I'd be like, yeah, that would be more economic. And, you know, <laughs> you can't always get to whatever city it is they're touring or whatever. So Celeste Barber, who is an Australian comedian, she uh, was at the end of November. She yeah. did a live show, and you could stream it, and it was from available her from her house, from her apartment. From her bedroom, I think. She didn't wear pants. That was the big thing. That's because you could just see from about here up. <laughs> yeah. And it was hilarious. And it she was up once. <laughs> but it was worldwide and it was available for 48 hours. You could watch it as many times as you want. The ticket was 25 bucks. 25 bucks, yeah. And there's no way I would ever be able, like the slightest chance of getting to see Celeste Barber come to Toronto. When would she ever come to Toronto? And if I could, how much are the freaking tickets? Right. right? So that was really cool that I could see a comedic show. For twenty five bucks, we could all sit and watch. It was just one ticket we had to buy. While still supporting the artist. Yes, as well, we'll still supporting. Is- and and a lot of comedians and magicians and uh, like stage performers went to that type of model and figured out, oh hey, if I do something like this, yeah, they can work with someone else that takes a small cut of it. Mm-hmm. But it's not like Ticketmaster. It's no. not like they're taking you know seventy five percent of that ticket or whatever. Almost all the money that they're making goes to support that person. So, yeah. but like I was thinking, I was like, well, is there anyone I would go see? And I'm like, yeah, I just y'all know me, I'm cheap. I'm like, I would, lo- I still would love to go see Weird Al Yankovic perform. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> but he only performs in small venues, and those tickets are stupid expensive. The last time he was in Austin was four hundred dollars for like a nosebleed. What? Wow. Yes. It wasn't that much when I saw him, but I can believe uh, that. I, it's gone. I, believe me, when you, it, it's gone up. Because the last time I looked, I was like, no, I'm gonna go. And then I saw the ticket, I was like, nope. <laughs> uh, but like, if I did like thirty, forty, even maybe even fifty dollars to go in the theater and have it surround sound, I would be like, no, that would be that'd be worth it. Mm-hmm. So, um, so There's yes. A, so the the theater near Sean uh, is actually renting it, uh, time slots. You can bring in your Blu-ray and mm-hmm. uh, yeah, don't play any movie. Play mm-hmm. any movie for you. Uh, the Draft House is off, also advertising you can rent out time slots for like a hundred some odd dollars um, and bring in your HDMI enabled uh, video game console. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, Ma- cool. Mario Kart on a big screen? Are you kidding me? <laughs> that would be the shit, dude. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I can watch yeah, so. you lose at Mario Maker over and over again. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> See, our planetarium should be doing stuff like that. <laughs> you know what? Maybe we should talk to uh, Fred. talk to Fred about it. That's actually yeah. not a bad idea. Um, so that is something that could possibly, you know, we could get some positive coming out of that. Uh, another positive that I read about. Oh, sorry. Oh, go on. I was just gonna say about the uh, theater one. One one last thing that I I heard that they might do is actually change the ticketing system as well. So that if you go and see like a blockbuster, it's going to be at your higher price. But if you're going to see a, com- uh, a comedy that was made at a budget, 
then you're going to pay a budget price. And that way they change their, their system that way because they know that they're not going to be drawing people in for those lower tier movies. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the other things that were talked about. Uh, Cause like Disney, Disney also is another huge player in this. It's like, well, yeah, we can, de depending on the movie, like you may see less comedies and especially ro romantic comedies in the movie theater because do you really need to go to the movie theater to see one? I mean, it would be a nice date situation. You like them too. What is that? <laughs> but I, I'm just, but like, it's like obviously the big tent pole stuff, but some of the bigger, maybe some of the bigger, you know, like kids movies or whatever. Yeah. But like some of the family stuff that's just like, yeah, we, we, it's like, why not just go ahead and put it on a streaming service and get that qualified check and be done with it. Like, yeah. Hey, listen, we, we made the money we were looking to make. It's good. Yeah. So yeah. um, the streaming services, I think, are really going to start to change stuff like that. So uh, are they going to have any movies out on Christmas? Because for a while I was hearing they were releasing Wonder a Woman. few, but Wonder that's Woman. the only Wonder one. Wonder Woman's the only one that I know of. Huh. And will I be watching it in the theater? No. Will I be watching it on HBO Max? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so um, be, just be, not that I don't want to go see this movie on the big screen. I would like to go see this movie. I really liked the first Wonder Woman movie. I'm just not comfortable going back to the movie theater yet. Yeah, so. No, we're, we're not. Well, ours yet. isn't even open. So, oh, yeah. I've been oh. several times. I went to see Tenet. God damn it. Was it, was it nice good? The theater with that movie sucked. Oh, I heard it was really good. See, I've heard oh. both. I've heard back and forth on it. So, Like, I can understand where you need like you need to go in with like a piece of paper and then like map out the timelines <laughs> because literally the movie goes like this and then it goes back like this. Mm. So and then you're like a whole bunch of shit starts making sense, but it was way overhyped. It's mm. like the only movie to see right now in theaters. Every well, yeah, like the last that's four months. It's like uh, uh, what was that movie uh, Memento where the whole thing is played. Well, if you haven't seen it, I won't tell you. <laughs> but <laughs> Memento kind of sounds like that. Yeah. <laughs> and <ain't ruined. laughs> and, that was, and that was one of the other things that people were like, well, what kind of movies are we going to see? And it's like, well, I mean, people still play old movies and people still go to them. Like mm -hmm. anytime there's a showing of Ghostbusters, like, you know, we would get dressed up and go do an event at oh, it yeah. and people would show up and it's like, everyone's got copies of this damn movie, but they still want to <laughs> show up to go watch it. Like Rocky Horror know. Picture Show. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Longest what running am, movie in theaters. Yeah. What I am hoping is that there's a resurgence of uh, <laughs> a resurgence of uh, the the drive-in. Like yeah. the drive-in. That was yeah. another benefit. Is there has I, been I, I, some of that. Yeah. There has been some, but I'd like to actually get them to like put money back into them and really make them nice and do events like get some DeLoreans out there and have a back to the future day and like, you know, have some fun with it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That would be awesome. I was just thinking like, especially if you did some of the old, like, especially if you did some of the really old stuff, like, Hey, we're going to do zombie weekend or whatever and just show the corniest, crappiest <laughs> oh, zombie yeah. movies. But yeah. it would be fun to go, you know, to the drive through and watch it and, you know, they could make all their money on popcorn and stuff. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. our yeah. Walmarts have started doing that. Some of yes, them. Yes, they have. Some of the like, Walmarts have started doing it. So a pop up screen and That's drive cool. in their parking lot. Yeah. Perfect. You got this space. You might as well use it. So yeah. Um, foster pet adoption apparently went through the roof. Oh. Uh, wow. Because people were like, "Well, I'm home. I I'm lonely. I I need someone." And Apparently, it has caused a lot of foster pets to get adopted. So, awesome. I know this because not that not that she is a foster, but yes, we ended up getting a new puppy. So it was just like we need something positive to end the year on. And uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> she's a spitfire, let me tell you. But she's <laughs> she's in good health. Um, working from home finally became an acceptable practice, and please God, let it continue for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of industries that I think are rethinking their whole structure because it's first of all it's working and second of all morale is up in a lot of for a lot of people because they're able to work from home. Uh, it's cheaper. I mean, it, well, it's cheaper, but so um, the two that I was impressed with, there was uh, one was the bank that I, I was dealing with. Uh, the person was working from their home. Uh, the other was the insurance company. They were working from their home, and then the third one, believe it or not, was a Disney Plus person. 
uh, she was working down her home somewhere in the States and she's like, yeah, it's a beautiful day. Uh, you know, it's, it's really nice where I am right now. And I'm in my house. I'm able to have coffee and whatever I want and all that stuff. And I'm still able to work. And I'm, so I think especially call centers are going to really rethink their whole. Well, my uncle works for Rogers and he's at home and he, he likes it. He prefers it. He likes yeah. it because he's got his whole setup. He doesn't have to worry about having to go on public transit and, you know, walking out. He doesn't have a car. So for him in downtown Toronto, it's all, you know, he has to walk to work or get on public transit and he's happy enough to have his setup at home. So what I'm hoping is, is that they reuse these, these massive buildings that used to house people just for that. Maybe they'll rethink those and, and reuse them for better options. Uh, like you have a ton of homeless people out there that maybe we can use, some of that, I don't know. Or in vertical farming. Vertical farming is another option as well. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah, I worked at a call center. And it's basically a football field sized building that just has a bunch of cubicles. And granted, when I worked in a call center, telecommunicating wasn't really that, really wouldn't have been that easy. But now it's just like, yeah, why would you, why are you spending all this money for the electrical and the air conditioning and, and everything else for this giant building when you can just tell everyone, hey, stay at home. You come on at nine, put on your headset, log yeah. into the system, you're good. Yeah, yeah. We have so. a call center in town that um, everybody's work from home now. They're not coming back to the building they were running from us. So, so and I mean, so your costs, your business costs go down. You could probably pay your people a little bit more to buy, you know, to help them out with their costs of increased potential for electricity and all that stuff. And that would be a way to get your people, your morale up even further. Oh. So, well, for the people who can work from home, there are people that are like, no, I need to get out of the house. And I understand that, too. Yeah, <laughs> and I completely understand that, too. I can understand yeah, I'm kind of torn, too, because I, I liked working from home for the month I did, but I want to be around people, too. Yeah. You know, I want that interaction, and uh, I feel like sometimes I'm more productive when I'm out of the house. I tend to be, you know, fall into that lazy trap if I'm at home too much, so. It's definitely, it is definitely a thing. It's, it's. I can definitely see there are some people that can work from home and, and some people that I don't want to say can't, but would prefer not to. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to each their own, like, you know, I'm, I'm, it, it, the more options we have, the better. So, yeah. yeah. Um, even though we're not supposed to be getting together <laughs> as large groups, um, board gaming has mm -hmm. boomed. <laughs> and that was another thing that was kind of like, oh, you play board games? Or dork. Like, what? <laughs> Have you ever heard of a video game? What would you ever play with? Um, but yeah, so it's like it's really taken off. And I know more and more people have talked about, you know, they're like, well, yeah, I'm not getting together with a bunch of people or maybe they have a small group. But they'll like, yeah, we started playing board games with the kids and it's been a lot of fun. And I'm just like, yes. So or you uh, can be like us and play online. Yeah. Or that, you know, once they finally got everything kind of like ironed out somewhat. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was actually a lot of fun. Um, a couple other things. All right. So I didn't have this one on there, but I'll throw it on there. Um, and you brought it up earlier, Jennifer, Tiger King, <laughs> love it or hate it. Oh my God. It was, it was there at the right time. Yes. <laughs> what a train wreck. What an I didn't watch it. I just, I know it's a thing. <laughs> it was a, it was a really nice distraction. Of all the things to come out. That was amazing. <laughs> timing yeah oh yeah yeah it was it was a nice and then um logan got in on it too so it was her and i watching it together but it was a nice distraction and carol is guilty as hell she totally fed her husband <laughs> to her and that's the, I, I would say of the positive if you definitely want this in the positive the people who probably should have had shit happen to them had this just come out on netflix and not everyone <laughs> pardon me been home to watch it may have flown under the radar now yeah. everybody knows exactly what's going on, and they're like, "No, you need to reopen this investigation." Like, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah some <laughs> justice may end up getting served by uh, to some people. Mm -hmm. um, I have not. I've talked to a lot of people, <laughs> and everyone has said there's at least two things you absolutely have to watch this year. Okay. One of them I haven't watched. Christy watched. It's uh, the pretty much the only must see thing on Apple Plus TV, and that is Ted Lasso. That is supposed to be an absolutely fantastic show. It's just supposed to be. It's not unironic. It's just he's just a good dude, 
and it just makes you feel good watching the show. Um, I know people who just can't stop talking. So, and I'm like, maybe I should go back and rewatch. Cause like I said, Christy watched it and she really enjoyed it. Maybe I should go back and rewatch it. Um, this is something that's happening right now. Uh, I'm not necessarily a fan of hers. I mean, some of her music's not bad, but, um, Taylor Swift is currently fighting for her music and God, I hope she wins. Um, mm. uh, so her first, I think, six albums were control, you know, were mm-hmm. under an agreement, pretty standard contract for making music. And uh, I don't even know the guy's name, but he basically Scooter he, Braun. Yeah, uh, yeah, basically sold the rights to all of the first, you know, six albums she had underneath her. She was like, "No, I will pay for pay for it. I want them." And he was like, no, I'm going to sell them to someone else. And they weren't like part of the negotiations negotiations were they couldn't even contact her and let her know that that's what was going on. Like it was just a really screwy thing. <clears throat> so she's like, all right, so cool. Legal. I'm just going to re-record all my masters. Fuck you. It's, it's not though. The, the whole thing was, wow. um, so it, all of her records that she had made up until I think her last two that she's put out were under contract with this record company. And I guess mm-hmm. this is just, policy this is just common practice yep. that they're they're the record company's property to do with whatever they want to do with wow. so this company sold it to another company that just happened to be owned by scooter braun who she hates yeah. who's justin bieber's manager oh, that's fitting <laughs> and and scooter just sold them again for 300 million dollars so taylor's never going to get any of that money those songs are whoever owns them can do whatever they want with them she's got no control so she decided that she's going to re-record everything mm-hmm. which basically cuts the, the yeah. co- you know basically unfortunately whoever bought them is about to get screwed on this like yes because she is hardcore diehard fans yes yeah. and I, like i said I'm, it's not like i'm a huge fan of hers but as someone who understands that content should be owned by the creator. I'm 110% behind her on this. I'm like, fucking go girl. Like it's, it's time for the industry to understand. Okay. We put up the money, we put out the album and and distribute it or whatever, but it's yours. Like those days need to be gone. A a portion absolutely goes towards the producers. Well, yeah, hundred percent. Yes. But yeah, they, (laughs) The creator should absolutely have control of yeah. who will be yeah. yeah. Um, and then the last thing that I had on the list, everyone here can uh, vouch for, except for one, Jennifer. <laughs> um, the saving grace for me, at least the latter part of this year, has been The Mandalorian Season 2. <laughs> okay. Week after week, it is just fantastic and i fucking love it and uh which actually leads into something else that i didn't have on my list here um and that happened earlier this week disney did not have their big d3 conference disney did not have comic-con disney did not have anywhere to go to announce all their cool guy stuff so at their big at their meeting there earlier this week they're like oh yeah by the way the next two or three years we're gonna release 10 new star wars things 10 new Marvel things and like 15 new Pixar things and everyone's mind just fucking melted because <laughs> the stuff they're talking about, I'm just like, Oh, um, <laughs> I am so excited. Like the thing that honestly just, I showed the boys the trailer for the bad batch and yeah. Nicholas like lost his shit because he fucking loves the clone wars. And he's just like, is this more? I'm like, yep, more clone war stuff. And I, I love where they're going with it. Uh, the thing that blew my mind was the um, Marvel What If um, to see to see Peggy be- become the super soldier. I was just like, mm. oh, shit, that looks awesome. Wow. Um, has anyone else watched that trailer? No. Yeah. Yes. Um, that is zombie Captain America throwing yes. the shield. Yes. I thought so. They're, oh, my God. If the, they do the, the Marvel zombie zombies. Marvel stuff, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm going to just lose my shit, yeah. dude. I have a little bit extra vested in, in, uh, interest in how Disney does things. Uh, I'm going to show you all something. Uh, so I own, some, I own stock in Disney, and over the last week... Oh, you can't see... Oh, I, stay off my green screen. Uh, how do I do this? Uh, none. There you go. Over the last week... Well, yeah, little spike holy the, hell. So it's been very good for me. Nice. Stuff. 
Uh, yeah, I didn't realize it was happening. I don't think anyone really did. And all of a sudden, like my my Facebook feed just starts filling up with stuff. And they're like, they're doing an Ahsoka show, and I'm like, oh my god, that's gonna be awesome. They're doing this. Okay, that's really cool too. They're doing that, and I'm just like, is this serious? Like, are are y'all making shit up at this point? <laughs> did you watch the trailer for Loki? Yes. 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 That was looks that a certain uh, redhead sitting in on a, on a yeah, yeah? Okay. Yeah, I I noticed that. Different timeline is my guess. Yeah, it would have to be. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I am so hyped for all of this different stuff. I love that. Did y'all see the Buzz Year, uh, uh, the Lightyear sh- uh, movie thing? No, no, no yes. I just read something about it just before we started the show that the a new Buzz Lightyear movie. Oh no, no, yeah. no, no. It is a. I think it's a series. It's either a series or a movie, oh, okay. but it's supposed to be based on the fictional. Um, um, astronaut that Buzz Lightyear is based off of. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I'm just like, what an interesting way to go about this. I, cool. I, it's fucking Pixar. I'm down. Yeah. Done. Is, but, is it the same? Uh, is it Tim Allen? No. Oh, no, um, I, no. I can't remember who. It was. I don't remember, but the whoever they got for the voice, I was like, nope, that sounds cool. Oh, <laughs> um. The fact that they're they they announced when they are start filming Guardians three, they're also going to film the oh. Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas special. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Uh, <laughs> hell what about yes. the, uh, all those uh, leaks about Spider Man and basically a live action Spider Verse? Oh, oh yeah, my God, yes. that's gonna be amazing. I'm yes, it is. for that one. Mm-hmm. I'm uh, I can't. I really hope that they do uh, our Andrew Garfield. Uh, right by this one i feel like that the amazing spider-man was they gave up on it too soon there was some really uh, he played that character really well i know that he was too cool to be spider-man but i don't know he he did it really well. andrew garfield being too cool (laughs) yeah i know (laughs) but yeah there's media wise there's been some fantastic especially the last couple of weeks it's just been the stuff that's happened on The Mandalorian has just blown my mind. I and haven't seen yesterday's episode yet. No, neither have I. I just watched it. Watched I, won't, it. I won't say anything. Um, Shut up. <laughs> it, um, oh, God, it is so good. And just <laughs> the stuff that they're, the so the the seeds that they're sowing, like the, the Ahsoka uh, show is just, I'm like, yes, down. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, what's his face is coming back as Vader in the yeah, Obi-Wan Christian. series. Hayden Christensen. Yes. Oh, and I'm just like. And, you know, and I, and oh, I, I, was listening, I was listening to a podcast and they were like, they're like, you know what? It's time. We need to fucking cut the dude a break. He was not the, he was not the problem in those movies. No, he the wasn't. problem in those movies was the directing and the writing. <laughs> um, supposedly at the last, um, uh, uh, big, uh, Disney celebration, like he did, like they invited him and he showed up and everyone was like super excited to see him. They even got together as a group photo. Everyone who was dressed up as Anakin they gave him one as well, and they were all holding like oranges or something like that. And they all told everyone, like, you know, toss it up at the same time so it looks like they were, you know, hovering the fruit. Yeah. And he was like, <laughs> okay, okay, that's cool. That's fine. Whatever. Like, it, it's one of those things that's like, listen, dude, I know everyone gave you shit. Sorry about that. Fuck those people. You're one of us. Come on back yeah. in. Yeah. So I just hope they do a, a, a redo of the, uh, like the Revenge of the Sith uh, Saber Battle. Like a part oh. two. Oh yes, that would be fantastic. Yeah. So, um, was there anything else awesome that you can s- squeeze out of 2020? It's still kind of hard to get anything out of this. Stone, we moved. But... You, moved. <laughs> you moved. I got two. Uh, SpaceX, the shuttle docking. Fuck yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. And then the Pentagon basically saying UFOs are real. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, oh, and did cool. you hear the Iran? Israeli. 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 Yeah, that was interesting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I, I'm gonna throw out there the uh, the Amazon uh, forest find where they've got the eight miles or whatever of the um, uh, paintings that were. Oh are, yeah. Or the graphs. Yeah, I haven't seen graphs. that one. I need to go see that one. Oh, it's it's incredible. It's uh, all these different. It, it's like what ten thousand years old or something. Mm-hmm. And it's all these paintings uh, of human figures with these giant, uh, different giant animals. And yeah, it's really cool. Okay, I'll have to go look that up after this. 
Yeah. Yeah. Did y'all watch the the latest SpaceX? Uh, the, Explosion. The, yeah. Well, you know it was supposed to, right? Like he basically said it's got a one to three chance of landing. Like the whole point of this was fire it up, let it fall, and let's figure out what the last possible second is we can because that motherfucker corrected. Oh, it yeah. did correct. It just didn't stick the landing, and it's just like it was like watching. It's like watching an old fifties like sci-fi. It doesn't look real to me. It I. <laughs> I good, still cannot good, get it to my through my head every time I see the rockets actually stick the landing that I'm like that actually happened like that's a real fucking thing. Yeah. yeah. So, but, yeah, that's crazy shit. All right, I guess with that, let's go ahead and move on to our picks and pans for the week. Would anyone like to go first? Pick. I'm on vacation. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one more week and then I can say the same thing. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so, um, I'll jump in. Um, I've already said it. I'll say it again. Fucking Mandalorian. Like it's just, <laughs> God, it is so good. I, I, I am enjoying it so much and watching it with the boys. has just been a blast. The only problem is I have to keep telling them, you can't ask any questions. Daddy, daddy doesn't know either. I'm, I'm watching it with y'all. Okay. Yeah. Um, yes. I know some of the backstory and, and what's funny is, is they're, they're picking up on some of it too. Um, you know, when some of these characters are showing up, they're like, Oh, that's so-and-so. I'm like, yep, yep, sure is. Um, but yeah, I'm just, it's so awesome because at this point in the second season, we have tied in stuff from, um, the, the original trilogy, the, the prequels, and now, like, I, I'm really expecting, if not this season, next season, we're going to start seeing stuff pulled in from the new uh, trilogy. Yeah. And it's just like, this is, at this point, just fucking let Dave Filoni have it. Like, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. Kathleen Kennedy, if you want to stay in, that's fine. Just let him have the reins and yeah. just go at this point. So, yeah. um, anyway. Um, Ray, did you have any pick or pan? Um. I, you, I think we've done enough negatives, so I'm going to try and stay in the positives. Got an Xbox Series X, which we're super excited about. That's awesome. Uh, got awesome. itself set up. Uh, the We are done for Christmas shopping, yes, which we're is absolutely uh, incredible. We're done for the kids. For, we're done for the kids, yeah. Yeah, we saw, I'm, I'm not done. Oh, okay, well, apparently there's something else coming. Um, and then uh, um, just... I'm thankful we have you guys. Mm-hmm. I, I can't say that enough. You guys uh, rock, and uh, it's. Uh, I wish we could be closer, but uh, you know. Yeah. Hey, you moved away from me. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason. Uh, <laughs> That's why they moved. That's why they moved. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's. Uh, yeah. Thankful we got the show because this is this helps me through my weeks. That's for sure. So, ah, <laughs> Chris, what about you? <laughs> uh, yeah. So no pans because yeah, this whole it's been twenty twenty has been a bit of a pan. Um, yeah, it's been a weird year for sure. Um, my pick, I guess, would be. Started Christmas baking, although I froze it all, so I didn't eat any of it. I, I ate some raw dough. So there's that. As uh, one should. <laughs> yes, as one should. Um, I don't know. I just have been... I don't know. I don't really have a pick. Well, watching The Mandalorian was pretty good. Yeah, therapy's going well. Oh, therapy's going well. I had a good yeah. therapy session yesterday, so it was oh, pretty good. Good. Yeah. good. You know, therapy's working for me. Yay. It's the first time <laughs> in my life I've shot. You've opened up your shop. Oh, I opened up my shop, my Etsy shop, last week. So that's when you got a sale. I've got two now. I have two sales. My mother-in-law bought something. I got that yesterday, like last night. I'm like, she buys. I would have just given it to her. (laughs) She's trying to support you. I know, and that's the thing. And I know if I like cancel the order and just give it to her, she'll be upset at me. So she will. Yeah. (laughs) I can't do that. Um, But I'm definitely taking off the free shipping option. I can't yeah. have free shipping. I nope. can't. It's just, it's too much money. We had that conversation. It is, like I said, I don't know if it, because you're in Canada, I don't know if it affects you as much. It was basically, it was shoved down the U.S.'s throat. Yeah. Thou shalt offer free uh, shipping or no one's ever going to find your store. And it's like, okay, cool. Everything yeah. just got jacked up in price. 
Yeah. The problem is up here is it's so expensive yeah. to ship anything, yeah. even within our own freaking country. Yeah, that's what that's why I thought you had mistyped that. I was I was getting clarification. I was like, you mean outside of Canada? You're like, no, no, inside Canada. I was like, oh, okay. Literally an hour away. It's costing me 18 bucks to expedite it, expedited shipping to that. And it was, yeah, it's really expensive. So I'm taking that off and I'm keep, because the option was raise the prices, do the free shipping, but I'd have to raise the prices a lot or keep the prices the same and you have, just have to pay for shipping. So yep. just keeping everything the same and you pay for shipping, which I have to still do that before somebody buys a blanket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might want to get on that. Uh, Jen, do you have a picker pan? Um, I really don't have anything good. <laughs> I hate to be a Debbie Downer, but like nothing exciting's happened in my life. I just found out two days ago half my family has COVID and I had to get tested, even though it's been two weeks since I've seen them. But um, my sister's not coming for Christmas, so that's a bummer. So it's just been a year, yeah. <laughs> you know. But, yeah, hopefully I'll get to bake soon, too, and, you know, that'll cheer me up a little. <laughs> Oh man, um, Joseph, <laughs> you have a pick or pan? Uh, my picks were gonna be all the Marvel things that got released like the other day. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, all that was stuff was pretty good. <clears throat> and go. there's been a lot of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, it's uh, well, that, that is our show for not only the month but for the year of 2020. The next time we talk, at least on this show. It'll be 2021, and, you know, I know technically it's it's not like, you know, the clock's going to magically strike, you know, midnight, and things are immediately going to get better, but mentally we can at least think, okay, new year, time to fucking, like, get back at it. We gotta, let's get <laughs> shit straight and move forward, so. Um, as always, you can find us on epicallygeeky.com. There you can find all the shows that we do, including the Marginally Geeky Show, the Creatively Geeky Show, Sustainably Geeky, maybe Procrastinators. Um, uh, you can find us on the social media at um, Epically Geeky, and then, of course, epicallygeeky.com, where you can find links to um, my Etsy store, uh, uh, Ray's Etsy store. Should we throw your Etsy store on there as well? You want me to? Please. Okay, I can do that. Uh, just throw all the stores on. Uh, make it easy for everyone to find us. So, um, where can we find you online, Jen? Um, you can find me here, creatively geeky, marginally geeky, and sustainably geeky on it's Facebook, gonna... Instagram, and Twitter. Huh? Head's gonna be me. Head's gonna be me. No. <laughs> Ray, where can we find you online? Uh, you can find me, uh, The Reluctant Yeti, on Instagram and Twitter. So. Chris? Um, here, Marginally Geeky, uh, Creatively Geeky, uh, Sustainably Geeky with Jen. Um, and we have a show next week. Yes. Next week? Okay. Yes. <laughs> Hopefully. Yes. Like, Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> Um, and on Instagram, uh, my shop name is Rose and Hummingbird. Uh, Joseph? Uh, all the places, Joseph Morales. That's all you got to look for. Yeah. <laughs> John? Um, pretending to be a visionary on Creatively Geeky. Uh, insightful on Marginally Geeky. <laughs> um, pretending to have actually played the game on procrastinators <laughs> and yeah just uh, trying to be funny on the mac daddy of all geekies this one all nicely done. all over trying really hard pretending really? <laughs> i am very trying there you go. <laughs> so thank you to test <laughs> And as always, you can find my individual wacky adventure online at Optimus Chain on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. For everyone on the site, have a good night.